I think everybody who's ever been associated with the oyster industry, our fondest hope is that our native oyster would miraculously come back and everything would be back like it was in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. But, you know, we're 40 years down the road since the first onset of MSX, and that hasn't happened. So we're, we're essentially working from the gr from from a brand new start point. What native oyster is that? <laughs> Where is he at? Other than those floats out there, there is no native oyster. The Chinese oyster, the area Kensis oyster, was found by the people at Vim's, you know, in China, uh, and brought over here and, you know, tried on very small scale to see how it would survive in the bay. We want to compare the uh, area Kensis and how it grows and, and uh, acquires disease to the native oyster. And the reason we want to do that is because Maryland and Virginia have begun to investigate the possibility of using Cressastria area Kensis as a replacement for the native oyster since the native oyster is struggling so. Virginia desperately needs an oyster resource, and, and we need an oyster resource both from the standpoint of putting people back to work, creating jobs in Virginia, and we need an oyster resource from an environmental standpoint too. The general idea is that non-natives present a, an instant opportunity for, for having disease-resistant oysters that might do well in the bay. To me, this oyster, it, it, it grows fast, it doesn't get the diseases, it tastes good. Um, it looks to me like it's got a great potential. I mean, it's just phenomenal what these, I mean, it's just, it's sort of unbelievable. Yeah. It's like super oyster or yeah. something, you know, it's superhuman. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, the thing is that we see it now. We see how it kicks ass. And so, what are you going to do? I mean, our industry either disappears if we wait, or, you know, we look for an alternative. Uh, at the same time, uh, I am uh, personally interested in seeing ecological restoration uh, be undertaken in, in large scales. And we really can't do that in moderate salinity and higher salinity portions of the bay because Crestastria virginica just can't survive that long. But if area Kensis can survive longer and create the reef habitat that we think is important and perform the ecological services like water filtration and, and uh, benthic pelagic coupling, uh, then it might, might hold some real benefits for the ecosystem as a whole. If they, they can actually complete their life cycle in the bay, then I think that populations would build up to be significantly ecologically beneficial. Yeah, I mean, it's an oyster after all. It's very similar in its everyday working functions to the oyster that is now gone. We're hoping that Cressastria akensis will have many of the life history characteristics that Virginica does, that it creates reefs, that it, it occurs in dense assemblages, and that it, it uh, will provide the kind of, of uh, energetic manure for the, the, uh, the benthic organisms to use uh, and grow and recruit uh, from. Uh, but we really need to, to find that out. We need to do experiments to demonstrate that. The controversy is because no one really knows what to think regarding what's going to happen if it is introduced. Well, as with all non-native species, there are uh, a plethora of risks. Uh, it, it's possible that the animal could bring in or host a new disease, one that would infect oysters or perhaps one that might even infect other species. Uh, it could be that there are diseases here that we're unaware of that uh, could infect uh, the area Kansas once we get them here. We're, we're on the slippery slope. I mean, and whether the slippery slope ends up in a painful experience or not, we don't know. But basically, now we've seen it. We've seen sort of an alternative energy source, you know. And what are we going to do? Put it back in the box and send it away and say, well, we forgot. Forget it. Just forget it. You know, we're not going to think about using that anymore. I don't know how that can happen. I, I don't think that using area Kentis is uh, going to uh, exclude restoration with the native oyster. I don't think it should. Um, uh, all of our lessons say diversity is good. You know, we shouldn't eliminate one species and substitute another. Uh, and, uh, you know, once Mother Nature takes over, uh, if area Kentis is introduced, um, uh, they, the species will probably sort themselves out. We have not seen anything to indicate to us that this is not going to work. In the end, it's going to be largely 
an act of faith and socio-political decision about the introduction. It's a daunting task to try and wrap your arms around all the risk, but certainly we can at least learn about part of the risks and then really cross our fingers and, and hope things go well after that. It's just too much of a wild card to predict what a non-native will do in a new environment.